Recently, Elon Musk lost $200 billion. Some are seriously questioning what the future holds for the multi-billionaire. Today, we're looking at a few things about Elon Musk you probably didn't know. Why 2022 was such a messy year for Tesla and Twitter, and what the future holds for Musk and his companies. We'll also take a peek into the brain chip that's being developed by yet another company co-founded by Musk, and how it may be the game changer in helping paralyzed people walk again. Elon Musk just lost $200 billion. In January 2021, Elon Musk became the second person in the world to amass a fortune beyond $200 billion, the first being Jeff Bezos. But several weeks ago, Musk broke yet another record. But this time, it's probably not a record anyone would be proud of. Musk officially became the first person in history to lose $200 billion from his net worth. To put it in perspective, in November 2021, Elon Musk had around $340 billion to his name. But a year later, in 2021, 2022, his net worth had shrunk to $137 billion. Yes, I know what most people are thinking. $137 billion is still a ton of crazy money to have. And yes, it's true, but nevertheless, does it make you wonder, how did Musk manage to lose $200 billion? Well, a lot has to do with Tesla. By October 2021, Tesla was valued at over $1 trillion. And that was despite the fact that the company only owned a portion of the market. But then came 2022, which is known as Tesla's worst year to date. Last year, Tesla shares dropped 65%. Imagine how you'd feel if you were Musk, right then and there. Well, in a staff memo, Musk told employees not to be too bothered by stock market craziness. He tried to inspire confidence by saying that the company demonstrates continued excellent performance. The market will recognize it. Here's the thing. Competition in the EV market is quickly catching up to Tesla. But 2022 saw Elon Musk's attention focused elsewhere. And by elsewhere, I mean Twitter. You'll recall Musk bought Twitter for a whopping $44 billion. But for that to happen, Musk was forced to sell his Tesla stock. So you can see that buying Twitter wasn't cheap. And when Musk finally acquired Twitter, things didn't exactly go as planned. Elon Musk said back in November that Twitter was losing $4 million a day. Well, Musk addressed the issue by laying off 75% of the 7,500 employees and by closing Twitter's Seattle offices. By the way, speaking of Twitter, Elon Musk almost broke the internet with a Twitter post last December 2022. In the poll, Musk actually tweeted, Should I step down as head of Twitter? I will abide by the result of this poll. Well, believe it or not, more than 17.5 million votes came in, and 57.5% of the voters said yes. The interesting thing is that he asked the general public. It sounds democratic and all, but we're talking about asking people who aren't collectively involved with strategy, technology, and our policy to vote on something that will impact the direction of an influential company. Anyway, from the looks of it, Musk appears to be keeping his word. Two days later, Elon Musk tweeted, I will resign as CEO as soon as I find someone foolish enough to take the job. After that, I will just run the software and servers team. But of course, it's only contingent on finding the right replacement. So now the question is, who will Twitter's new CEO be? You can imagine analysts are already speculating. Some believe the new CEO will be a close friend of Elon Musk. For example, maybe Jason Galkinis. He's an angel investor with stakes in Robinhood and Uber. And he also just happens to be one of Elon Musk's friends and public supporters. Another possible candidate could be David Sachs. He's a co-founder and partner at a venture capitalist firm called Kraft, which invested in Palantir, Lyft, Slack, and Twitter. Believe it or not, Musk actually tweeted out a different poll asking the public if he sex or a partnership with the two should run Twitter. The majority, which was just 39%, voted for neither of those three options and opted instead for other then there's Jack Dorsey. Dorsey is another friend of Musk. Not only did Dorsey help co-found Twitter, but he also posted Twitter's first tweet back in 2006. A year later, he was CEO of Twitter and ran it for about two years before his stint was over. By 2015, Twitter was losing popularity. So Jack Dorsey came back as CEO and stayed until 2021. Right now, Dorsey is the head of payments company called Block, formerly known as Square. Anyway, some believe that Dorsey might not come back to Twitter since Musk reversed many of Dorsey's decisions after he took over. For example, banning Donald Trump from Twitter was a decision made under Dorsey. But when Musk became CEO, he removed the ban on Trump. And there's also the fact that last May, when someone speculated that Musk would appoint Dorsey as CEO, Dorsey actually replied, nah, I'll never be CEO again. 
Another possible candidate for Twitter CEO is John Laguerre. Laguerre led major telecom company T-Mobile from 2012 to 2020. In a tweet addressed to Musk last November, Laguerre made the suggestion that Musk maybe should step down managing daily business and content moderation, but support product technology and let himself or someone else run Twitter. In other words, to Musk, Laguerre added the caveat that he is expensive, but then added, so is what you paid for Twitter. Musk was also quick to respond, in short but simple, no. Another possible candidate is Sheryl Sandberg. Back in September, she stepped down from COO at Meta, which owns Facebook. Before joining in 2008, Sandberg was vice president of global online sales and operations at Google. People who are rooting for Sandberg to become CEO of Twitter believe she could restore the platform's credibility and, and optimize Twitter revenue strategically, just as she revamped Facebook's advertising business. However, that all said, Sandberg and Musk actually share opposite political opinions, among other things. So, despite her business prowess, some believe the two would clash if they were to work together. In the meantime, as the search for a new CEO continues, there's a lot of activity going on at Twitter headquarters in San Francisco. There are reports that Musk has been making some unconventional cost-saving measures. For example, Musk canceled janitorial services at the building. Frankly, I'm not sure how he's able to pull that one off since employers are supposed to provide sanitary building for employees. Anyway, with janitors now gone, there are reports that some workers are even bringing their own rolls of toilet paper from home. The story goes that the janitors and the company were seeking better wages, but then they got locked out of the building with reportedly no warning. One janitor who had worked at Twitter for 10 years said he was told by Musk's team that eventually his job wouldn't even exist because robots would replace human cleaners. There's a lot of content floating in the media about Elon Musk's oddities and erratic decisions, which of course, whether or not some or all are true, is a story of its own. Not many people know this, but Elon Musk was originally from Pretoria, South Africa. At an early age, he showed signs of entrepreneurship when he went door to door with his brother to sell homemade chocolate Easter eggs. He developed his first computer game when he was 12 years old. Anyway, the video game was named Blastar, but it wasn't your average run of the mill video game. Musk actually sold it to a computer magazine for 500 bucks, which is a lot considering he was just a preteen. You could say it was a glimpse of genius. Musk has described Blastar as a trivial game, but better than Flappy Bird. Yet, despite his early business ventures, Musk's childhood was difficult. Evidently, his parents' divorce had a big effect on him. He was nine years old when they divorced, and he and his younger brother, Kimball, went to live with their father. But Musk has since said that the move was not a good idea. On top of that, he was also bullied at school, and he faced other difficulties due to his Asperger's syndrome. In fact, Musk got bullied so badly at school that once he was even rushed to the hospital after he was thrown down a set of stairs and beaten until he blacked out. After high school, Musk left home and moved to Canada and then to the U.S. In the U.S., he studied economics and physics at the University of Pennsylvania. He then moved to California to attend Stanford University. But after two days, he dropped out. He and his brother Kimball co-founded an online city guide software company called Zip2, which they sold to Compaq for $307 million. Musk then went on to co-found a direct bank called X.com, which later merged with Continuity to form PayPal, which eBay bought for $1.5 billion in 2000. That same year, Musk founded SpaceX. By the way, did you know that one of SpaceX's first vehicles was named after the song Puff the Magic Dragon? Musk named the spacecraft the Dragon after skeptics told him SpaceX would never be able to put vehicles into space. And then, of course, came Tesla. Believe it or not, in 2008, Musk personally saved Tesla from bankruptcy by investing 40 million bucks in Tesla and loaning the company 40 million more. That same year, Musk was named CEO of Tesla. Right now, most Americans associate Elon Musk with Tesla, SpaceX, and Twitter. But did you know that he has many more ventures? Some people have heard about the Boring Company, a tunnel construction company. But few have heard of the nonprofit artificial intelligent research company called OpenAI, which Musk co-founded in 2015. Even fewer people have heard of another company he co-founded, and that's Neuralink, which is a neurotech company that's developing brain chips that can be implanted within the skull. Right now, he's working on a brain chip that hopes to enable people who are paralyzed due to severe spinal cord injuries to walk again and potentially help blind people to see. Recently, Neuralink applied to the FDA to approval to start human trials. If the FDA grants the approval, it means the company will likely start human testing as early as this year. Musk has even stated that he plans to implant one of the devices into his own brain when it's ready. It's clearly a lofty goal, and their long-term mission is to create a human-computer interface where we'll be able to interact with computers using just our minds. 
Now recently, Neuralink is facing a federal probe for potential animal welfare violations. Apparently, the company has killed some 1,500 animals like sheep, pigs, and monkeys for medical research purposes. But there were complaints that some of the testing in recent times have been rushed, causing needless suffering and deaths. Anyway, despite the oddities and erratic behavior, you'll still gotta hand it to him that he's been involved with some of the latest technologies, be it PayPal, Tesla, SpaceX, Twitter, and Neuralink. But now you tell me, what's your opinion on Elon Musk? Do you think he's on the side of genius or insanity? Or maybe a bit of both? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.